two young quarterbacks will be playing this week on Sunday. Week three of the NFL. The New York Giants just named Daniel Jones their starting quarterback. And the Miami Dolphins just named Josh Rosen to be their starting quarterback. Two fun young quarterbacks. I can't wait to watch them. Uh, I want to start by discussing the move by the Giants with Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones was the sixth overall pick in the NFL draft. And uh, I want you to remember something (laughs) because it's funny. The reaction from Giants fans is, oh, yes, thank God, finally. And I just want you to remember how angry people got when not only Eli Manning was benched last time, but then remember back to the NFL draft in April. When the Giants picked Daniel Jones and there was a mutiny, people were angry, social media was crazy. This is why you cannot listen to social media. It's stupid and most people are wrong. People were so furious. How could you draft Daniel Jones? We should have drafted the other guy, all this nonsense. (laughs) Now, Now they're celebrating that they get Daniel Jones. So bipolar. New York sports fans are, I don't want to lump them all together because some people have known all along that Daniel Jones was great. And some of them are just unreasonable and angry on Twitter, and that's how it is. Um, I think that, first of all, I'm very, very excited to watch Daniel Jones. I don't have high expectations. I think he'll be okay. He's playing the Buccaneers, which is a great game to bring him in. But, but I'm excited to watch. I think he has a chance to succeed. A great running game, an offensive line that's subpar, but he can run around and move. I, I like it. But what I'm really excited about is actually the the decision from the New York Giants to move on from Eli Manning. A, a hard one, an emotional one. I would compare it to uh, my Toyota Corolla. It's a 19, I drive a 1995 red Toyota Corolla. It has 2,000, sorry, 293,000 miles on it. In 7,000 miles, a little less than 7,000 now, I will have 300,000 miles on my car. And my car is a pain in the butt. It has all these problems. It will not defrost. Like, the windshield's always fogged up. There's the, the, the door on the right side won't unlock with a key. It can only unlock it from the inside. Uh, it won't stay in fifth gear. It's a manual, but I put it in fifth, and it just slides out of fifth. I have to hold it in gear to keep it in fifth gear. It has a whole bunch of little problems. But if you know the story behind my Toyota Corolla, it was my brother's car. And my brother died three years ago. So his car is, like, one of the last things I have that are his. And I've driven this car far beyond anybody reasonably should right right i keep fixing it i keep doing stuff because it's sentimental to me and i give it more than i should because i love that car it means so much to me but recently i've been driving around going you know what it's time it's time to move on and get a new car it's winter my, my window's always fogged up i gotta i keep having to hold it in fifth gear it feels unsafe i gotta drive seven hours away next weekend i'm like is this even this is scary to me i don't know if this is the right thing to do i don't know that i should keep driving this car and so I'm going to make a tough decision and move on from my Toyota Corolla. I, you know, and, and that's painful, and I'll probably wait till I get to 300000 because that's a cool milestone. But it's the same thing with Eli Manning. It's a tough emotional decision. With a quarterback the Giants have had tremendous good moments with, memories, Super Bowls. He's a legend. It's awesome. It's sentimental. But they made the tough decision of walking away, and I applaud the Giants for doing that. It's time for Daniel Jones. The Giants are 0-2. Daniel Jones, I think, has a better arm. They can, you know, Eli Manning doesn't throw the ball downfield as much as I would like. They run a lot of screens. Some of that's because their offensive line isn't great. And it's not all Eli's fault. Eli's just kind of mundane. And if you're going to get average quarterback play, get average quarterback play from the young guy who can get better. Eli Manning's not going to get better. Him sitting on the bench is the only way that Daniel Jones can get better. You got to, sorry, that was a weird way to put it. Put Daniel Jones in the game. Because that's the only way you have a possibility of getting high-level quarterback play is that eventually he's going to get better and better and better. And I think he will. I believe in Daniel Jones. And so this is absolutely the right move for the Giants. It's moving on from Eli, a guy who is steadily declining, and go to a quarterback who's slowly going to get better and better and better. I believe in Daniel Jones. This is a great move. And I am I'm so excited to watch him. And if, if he's awful and throws two interceptions and sucks on Sunday— I really hope that people give him patience. Give him time. He's a young rookie quarterback. I don't think he's going to struggle. I don't think he's going to be awful. I don't think he throws two interceptions on Sunday. But if he does, don't freak out. Give the man a little bit of patience. I think he's a great quarterback who is going to do good things in this league. But you got to give 
with any rookie quarterback, you got to give them time and patience to develop and make mistakes. And the rules shouldn't change for Daniel Jones. Be patient with him. Give him time. And I think if you do, he will be rewarded. We're kind of just in a wait and see period right now. That's all, all I can say is be patient because we're, we just got to wait. And on Tuesday, when I talk about Daniel Jones, I'll have way more to say, a bunch of in-depth analysis. But for now, that's all I got. And it'll be really fun to see what happens. Now, the Miami Dolphins also made a change at quarterback. They named Josh Rosen their starting quarterback. And uh, he's a second-year QB, a former first-rounder who went to the Cardinals last year. Uh, then they traded for him in the, in the offseason. And I want to be very clear. The Miami Dolphins are not setting up Josh Rosen to succeed. And that's sad. That's awful. They play the Cowboys this week, who's a really, who are a, the Cowboys are a really good football team. And they're going to batter the Dolphins into the ground, I think. And so I, you know, the Dolphins of often, the, the Dolphins offensive line is terrible. Their defense is a joke. I, they have so many problems all over their roster. And I think a better team to, start your first game against would have been the Redskins in week five. I think you should have waited until week five to play Josh Rosen. Honestly, you're just going to get the guy hurt. They play, you know, who's that great defensive lineman from the Cowboys. He's going to just dominate and, and really maybe hurt Josh Rosen. I don't know. Um, but you know, I will say this, you can't wait too long. Cause the problem is the Dolphins play a lot of really good teams throughout the year. And if you just wait till they play a, a bad team where they have a chance to win or a chance to compete, you're going to wait forever. Cause the, the Dolphins are terrible and they play a lot of good teams with all year in the roster on the record. Um, now, I do think the truth is this. This is why, in my opinion, the Dolphins are starting Josh Rosen this week. I think they're trying to figure out what they have with Rosen. They're trying to figure out, is he a good quarterback? Now, here's the sad reality. If you can't tell he's a good quarterback from practice, he's probably not a good quarterback. Now, every once in a while, some guys are better. I'm, I'm actually a little better. Whenever, whenever I play quarterback, I was a little better when the lights were on in, in a real moment than I was in practice. I just got better. With, and with, when intensity picked up, I played a little better. There are some guys like that. Maybe Josh Rosen is the same way, but if they're not sure, he, he probably stinks, sadly but truly. Because you, you can tell if a guy's a good leader. You can tell if a guy has the little things off the field. You can tell from his preparation and all this stuff. And if he's not cutting it, there's a lot of reasons behind that that are more than just Oh, we can't throw an out route. It's preparation. It's the time you put in. It's who you are. It's your grit as a human. You dig deep in tough moments, all that kind of stuff. But the Dolphins need to determine. We have an early draft pick next year. We are, everyone's assuming. They have three first-round draft picks. My guess is at least one of them will be in the top 10. And the Dolphins need to determine. Are we going to use an early draft pick on a quarterback? Or are we going to build around... Josh Rosen. Now, I also want to be clear. I do not think that the Dolphins starting him is an act of confidence. Some people have said to me, wow, clearly the Dolphins think really highly of Josh Rosen if they're starting him. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it just means they're testing him to find out what he is. That's all. It's just a test. It does, this does not mean they think he's the future of their franchise. It means they want to know if he can play or not. They don't know. They want to find out. If they, if they really believed in him, I think they wouldn't play him all year because they would save the guy from getting hurt, from building bad habits, from getting destroyed with a bad offensive line. No, the reason why the Miami Dolphins are playing Josh Rosen is they're trying to figure out what they have. And I feel bad for him. I don't think their coaches believe in him. I think he's screwed. I think a team is awful. The offensive line is terrible. I think he's going to get clobbered by the Cowboys, and I feel bad for him. I do. He is not... Rosen is not being put in a position to succeed. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But sadly, I think Josh Rosen is going to struggle mightily this year. It's very, very sad. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It is my favorite thing in the entire world. And you may not know, um, my dream when I graduate college eventually is to do this show as my full-time job. Uh, now, I also want to be very upfront and honest about my plan and what's going on. I recently monetized my YouTube channel. What that means is that some of my videos make money through ad revenue. Uh, now, it's fewer than you think. A lot of my videos get claimed. Um, but in the past, I've received donations through the form of PayPal and Patreon.com. PayPal.me forward slash Zach Schaumler. Patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. 
So because I'm making ad revenue, it felt weird to just get donations. I wanted to give something back to the people who support me on Patreon. So now there's a reward. If you support me on Patreon, you can submit questions at the, at the dollar level or above. You just need to give a dollar a month. If you do that, you can submit questions to a pool of questions where I look at. I read all the questions on Patreon, and I pick the top couple every episode and read them and answer them on a, a segment called Ask Zach. I pick the top couple questions um, and answer them at the end of every single episode. Now, that's for people who want to support me with money. If you have no money to give, I totally understand. I've actually never supported anybody on Patreon. I feel kind of weird about that. I'm a broke college kid myself. I totally understand. Um, but if you believe in me and you, if you believe in my dream and still want to help me, one thing you can do is help me grow by telling your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Help me grow by telling your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. Guys, thank you so much. I know that was a long spiel. I really appreciate it. And uh, hope you have a great day.